The data below represent the per capita average disposable income, income after taxes for 25 randomly selected cities in a recent year. Complete parts A and B. Now first take a look at the data. If you notice the data is all in the 30,000s. Okay. So in part A, we want to construct a frequency histogram of the data with a first class having a lower class limit of 30,000 and a class width of 6,000. And we're going to choose the correct graph below. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up this data in the stack crunch. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to open up in stack crunch. Okay, so now here we have the data. Okay, so what's the data tell us? Well, the data is telling us that this represents the per capita income. So I'm going to put this in here, per capita income. And important to write is in thousands. Okay, so again, it's just important to kind of get used to, you know, inputting, you know, information into your stack crunch table. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get select the following. We're going to go graph and then select histogram. And now we're going to select the column that we created. The name is per capita income in, th in thousands. Okay. Now we want to scroll down because we want to create a frequency histogram. We want to make sure it's the frequency histogram. Now again, it's telling us that the lower class limit is 30,000. So in the bin section, we're going to start at 30,000. And then the width is 6,000. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and select value above bar. And then we're going to come down here. Okay, and then we can either title it. We can say uh, per capita um, disposable income. So we can come down here and title it as per capita disposable income okay and we can go ahead and put that in there and then the x-axis is going to be the per capita income which is in thousands and then the y-axis is going to be the frequency okay and then the next thing we want to do is just select compute so now we can see what our histogram looks like. So again, we can see that the class width is 6,000. But if you look over here, again, this is in thousands. So this is 30 to 35. So we have to not include the first one. Now the class width for this one is 6,000, but it does not look like our histogram. If we look at this one here, part C, then that's what our answer is. So let's check our answer. And there is our result. Now the next question is, is to construct a relative frequency histogram of the data with a first class having a lower class limit of 30,000 and a class width of 6,000. So again, if we just come up in here and open up our stack crunch, we can either go and do that again, or all we need to do is where it says options, just come up to options and then select edit. Because everything in here we've already created, we create the name of the column, We've created all the information. The only thing that we need to do now is change the type. And in this case, we want the relative frequency histogram. So we're just going to select relative frequency histogram and then select compute. Now we have the relative frequency. Now the only thing that I need to come back and change is if you look at the Y axis, it goes with 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, but it says frequency. So I need to come back in here and edit and then write Okay, this is now a relative frequency distribution. So now you can see that that's changed up here because that's what we want. So if you look at our options, we're looking for the relative frequency. So, so far it looks like A might be our choice. Okay, if we look at B, it would not be, even though it looks quite similar, but you can see that the class width is 5,000, not 6,000. And then if we look at C, it does not look like this option. So therefore, we're going to select A, and that is our answer.